For this lesson, we'll be focusing on the Shannon-Hartley theorem, also known as the noisy coding theorem. Shannon-Hartley theorem is the relationship for a bit rate to channel bandwidth. It's based on the concept of determining channel capacity of a digital system when its bandwidth and signal noise ratio are known. Now the term capacity is a property of an information channel which identifies the transmission rate is less than the channel capacity or limitation, which provides a low probability of error. So after hearing the official definitions, it's probably very confusing to grasp, but let's provide a simple analogy here. First of all, a communications channel is your physical transmission media. This could be a wire like a Cat5 cable, could be fiber optic, it could be over the radio waves for telecommunication. But either way, your channel is your median which transfers data. So for this one, I'm gonna use an analogy of a water channel. All it's gonna do is transport water from one end to the other. And your water is your data, and the wider your channel, or wider your bandwidth in this case, the more capacity you can have for your water. Now there's also another additive to that, that's your signal power. So your signal power will be considered your flow, or how powerful your water stream is going down your channel. So if you increase your signal power, you can get more water through your capacity there. Same thing, if you increase your bandwidth, you get more water flow, or more water in this case. So anytime you actually want to increase your capacity, you can increase one or the other. So as a simple analogy, try to think of a, a transmission you know, as if it was a water channel in this case. The calculations are not tit for tat, but just use that as a picture. Now that you have some concept what the Shannon-Hartley theorem is, now we can go over the mean potatoes, your equations. Now I broke up your equations into two sections, noise and noiseless. Now it's very common to come across your noise equations and some of your applications in problems due to the fact that in every transmission, you're always gonna have noise. And usually this is in a ratio, which is your signal noise ratio. Now, if you're not familiar with the signal noise ratio, we have a few videos that kind of refers to it. So go ahead and brush up on your signal noise ratio if you're not already. Now, noise list is usually in a digital modulation when it's only asking for the capacity in reference to your quantitative levels in reference to bits. So that's when you'll see that those particular equations. Now there's two things I want to go over before we do the practice problems. For the Shannon-Hartley limit, there are two equations you may need to actually use to find certain problems. One being, anytime you have a problem that has a bandwidth getting close to infinity, in other words, checking the white noise over the whole bandwidth spectrum, then you're going to use the first equation, which is 1.44 times signal over noise density. So be aware, some of your equations might actually have noise density in them. And noise density is watts over hertz. And anytime you want to find noise power based on that, you just multiply your bandwidth times your noise density, and that'll give you your noise power. It's pretty simple because both the hertz cancel each other out. And you can use your uh, noise density anytime you want to find capacity in your simple uh, Shannon-Hartley equation as well. And we're going to go over this in the practice problems next. All right, we're going to start off with an easy one. For an analog to digital system, determine the channel capacity if the signal noise ratio is 40 decibels with a bandwidth of one megahertz. Well, it's pretty simple. Well, the first thing I wanna do is probably identify what we're looking for and what we have. So the first thing is, we are looking for the channel capacity, so we're looking for C, and we have a signal noise ratio in decibels. Keep in mind, it's in decibels, that's very important. And we have a bandwidth, which is one megahertz. All right. Pretty simple so far. Now let's go over something we went over in signal noise ratio video. This particular signal noise ratio is in decibels. We're looking for a signal noise ratio that's unitless. So we're gonna to have to convert our decibels to the unitless ratios, which is not very difficult. But before we do that, let's probably look at the equation we're gonna use. Well, I can find the signal noise ratio, which we'll go over in a second. I have my bandwidth and I'm looking for my capacity. So we're most likely gonna use our first equation right here. But first, we're going to need to find the signal noise ratio from our decimals over here. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we're going to plug and chug in that equation. So the way we're going to convert decibels to ratio, just like we did signal noise ratio video, let's convert our decibels to our ratio. Well, if you look at our signal noise ratio video, it's pretty simple. It's going to be decibels equal 10 times log of 10, and it's going to be your power over your power reference. Now for our case, it's gonna be signal over noise. 
because we're going to use our reference to our noise. So if we start plugging chugging this in here, it's going to be 40 decibels equals 10 log of 10, and it's going to be signal over noise. Okay, so far so good. All right, now we're going to divide both sides by 10 and bring it down here. We don't need a calculator for that. It's going to be 4, and then the 10s cancel out. It's going to be log 10, signal to noise. Now here we're going to have to use our anti-log to get our log 10 over on this side. So for those of you who don't remember, for log of 10, the anti-log is going to be, I'll tell you what, I'll just do that, it's going to be this guy right here. So that's how you do the anti-log. So it's going to be 10 to 4. And that's how you get rid of our log 10 right there. And then signal to noise. And looking at that, that our signal noise is going to be 10 to the 4, which comes out to be 10k. So right now we found our signal noise ratio, which is 10k. Well, I might be able to fit it over here. I can leave this item up. So now we can probably plug and chug it in this guy right here. So it's going to be our capacity equals bandwidth log of 2 and then 1 plus signal to noise ratio. Well, bring down capacity. Our bandwidth, 1 megahertz. So 1 megahertz log of 2 parentheses 1 plus 10k. So 10k. And bring this down again. Capacity equals 1 megahertz log of 2. And then the, it's 10k, you know. It's kind of like adding the 1 is almost useless, but still got to do it. And we can plug and chug this in our calculator to give us a final answer of 13.288 megabits per second. So right there, that was our capacity. That wasn't very hard at all. All right, let's do another problem. All right, for our second example here, we have to determine the bandwidth for a pulse code modulation which has a capacity of 500 megabits per second with an 8-bit word length. This one's slightly different, but we can knock it out just the same. All right, so let's write down what we know and what we're trying to find. First thing we know is we know that our capacity is 500 megabits per second. We know our bits, which is 8-bit word length. So we know our bits is N is 8 bits. All right. And we want to find our bandwidth. So we want to find that guy. Well, that's pretty simple. Looking to the right here, and since this is going to be a kind of a digital signal, you're most likely going to be using either this guy or this guy mixed with another one of these guys. But looking at this, I'm probably going to use this one right here and then mix with that one. Reason being is, if I can find a quantitation levels, I can pretty much plug and chug the rest to actually find my bandwidth. But to find my quantitation levels, all I have to do is just use this equation down here, 2 to the n, or 2 to the bits. So let's start knocking this out. So find our quantitation levels. L equals 2 to the n, 2 to the bits, because we have bits. So it's going to be 2 equals 2 to the 8, which if you plug and chug that in your calculator, is going to give you 256. All right, so now we just determine L. That's pretty easy, pretty quick. All right, now we can actually plug and chug it in this equation right here. We just got to work backwards a little bit. So I'll tell you what, let me bring the equation down here. It's our capacity equals two times our bandwidth. Try not to mix these up. When you, uh, Some people do, and they actually accidentally put the two times bandwidth or take it out and when they switch between these equations. So be advised, that's something that some people actually get tripped up on. Anyway, continue on. Log of two times L. Let's see what we can start populating. For capacity, it's 500 megabits per second equals two times bandwidth log of two and then our levels is 256. Well I can already divide both sides by two get rid of that two right there and that'll give us 250 megabits per second and we still have bandwidth log of two and then 256 
Well, the good news is log 2 fit 256, I can plug and chug that in your calculator, and that will give us an answer of 8. So right there, log 2, 256 is 8, times our bandwidth, equals 250 megabits per second. Let me give myself some room. Apparently I ran out. All right, so I'll divide both sides by 8. Since that's bits, that will cancel out the bits for this one, and that's going to give us an answer of bandwidth. 31.25 megahertz. So right there, we just found our bandwidth just by manipulating the equations we have. All right, for our last problem, we have to find the minimum signal power to transmit 10 megabits per second at 2.4 megahertz. The noise power density is approximately 20 times 10 to the negative 10 watts per hertz. This one's a little trickier, has a few variables we've never used before but it's not very difficult to overcome. So, look at what we have here. Let's write down what we know and what we're trying to find. Well, what we know is, we know the capacity. Capacity equals 10 megabits per second. We know our bandwidth, which equals 2.4 megahertz. And we have our noise density. Noise density is always in watts per hertz, which this one's gonna be 20 times 10 to negative 10 watts per hertz. And it's always good to put your units in there. All right, now we want to find our signal power. So in this case, we just want to find S. Well, for what I have here, I might be able to manipulate this equation right here, but I need to first find noise to be able to do that. So I'm gonna have to use a, two equations to find uh, our final answer. So I'm most likely gonna be using this guy as well. So that's gonna be pretty simple. So we want to find our noise. So noise equals your bandwidth times your noise density. Well, your bandwidth for this one is, that's how I'll bring it down, 2.4 megahertz times your noise density, which is 20 times 10 to negative 10 watts per hertz. Now the real good news behind this is, this one has a numerator of watts and a denominator of hertz. So this one, once you multiply your hertz for your numerator times the denominator hertz, they're going to cancel each other out and leave you with watts. So if you plug and chug that in a calculator, it's going to give you an answer of 4.8 times 10 to negative 3 watts. Or in our case, 4.8 milliwatts. So right now, we already found our noise. I'll just bring it down here just so we can track it. All right. Now, I think we can use this equation right here and start populating it and start working backwards. So I'll tell you what, let me clean this up real quick. So let me bring this equation over. It's capacity equals bandwidth times log 2 of 1 plus signal to noise. So I can start populating this. We got 10 megabits per second equals your bandwidth, which is 2.4 megahertz log of 2. And it's going to be 1 plus your signal to noise. And our noise for this one is 4.8 milliwatts. All right. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of my bandwidth and bring it over to this side. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2.4 megahertz. And if you plug and chug that in your calculator, it's going to give you an answer of 4.1, and 6 is repeating. And that's going to equal log of 2, parentheses, 1 plus signal over your noise, which is 4.8 milliwatts. All right. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this log. So we got to find the anti-log. Now, like we did in the previous examples, your anti-log for this guy is going to be anti log is going to equal 2 to the x. So anytime you do log 2 of x, that's going to be your anti-log. So what I'm going to do for this side is, I'm going to do the same thing, 2, and for the x, this is going to be my x right here, so it's going to be 4.16. And then that's going to equal, log is going to get canceled out, 1 plus signal over noise. All right. Well, if I plug and chug that in our calculator, 
that's going to give us an answer of 17.88 equals 1 plus signal over noise. All right. Well, now we get rid of this 1, so go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides, and that's going to give us 16.88 equals signal over noise. All we have to do is multiply our noise to this side of the equation. So it's going to be 16.88 times 4.8 milliwatts. And if you multiply those two together, it's going to give you a signal of 0 0.08102, or in our case, 81.02 milliwatts. And that is going to be our final answer. So just learning how to manipulate these equations and work backwards sometimes, you can find your answers very quickly and easily. Hopefully there's enough information to make it dangerous. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know, and I hope you all have a good day.